Hi, I'm Bruce Bouquet of the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Welcome to Numerical Methods, How to Use Computers to Solve Difficult Math Problems. In this podcast, we'll consider using Chebyshev polynomials and really the roots of the Chebyshev polynomials in order to improve the results when we perform Lagrange polynomial interpolation. Let us recall the error that we find when we use Lagrange polynomials to interpolate a function. We pick n points in the function x1 through xn, and we find the function values at those points, and we fit a polynomial through those n points. So that will be an n minus 1 degree polynomial if we're going through n points. And we found that the error in doing that at any point is x minus each of the node values, x minus x1 through x minus xn, divided by n factorial times the nth derivative of the function somewhere on the interval. And if we want to know what is the maximum value of the error, then we just take the maximum of the right-hand side. We find what is the maximum of this numerator, the n factorial. We cannot change, and we find the maximum value of the nth derivative on the interval. And that gives us an upper bound for the error at any point when we're performing this kind of interpolation. Let's consider an example. We have the Lagrange polynomial error expression up here. And suppose we consider a function on the interval from minus 1 to 1. And we take 11 equispace points. We take the end points, minus 1 and 1, and nine points in the middle. So we have minus 1, minus 0.8, minus 0.6, and so forth until we get to 1. So let's consider what this numerator looks like, since we really have no control over the denominator nor the nth derivative of the function. And we can notice that near the middle of the interval, consider if x is equal to 0.1, then each of these pieces in the numerator become things like 0.1 minus negative 1, or 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.1 minus negative 0 0.8, or 0 0.9, and so forth. And this product of the 11 values comes out to around 0 0.00000982. If instead we consider an x value near the end of the interval, instead of near the middle of the interval, like 0.1 is right near the middle of the interval, if we choose 0.9 instead, we have 0.9 minus negative 1, 0.9 minus negative 0.8, and so forth. And we have the product on the bottom over here, which works out to be 0 0.00655. And we see that near the end, this is roughly 100 times as big as the error, the numerator of the error term near the middle of the interval. Note, of course, that at the grid points, at x equal 0 0.1 mi minus 1, at x equal minus 0 0.8, x equal minus 0 0.6, and so forth, that the error is 0. That's exactly where we fit the polynomial. So for evenly spaced grid points, the error is larger near the end of the interval than near the middle. And in this case, we see about 100 times as big error near the ends. So the question we ask is, is there a better set of points we can use to reduce the maximum value of the numerator? Let's consider another case, an example uh, similar to the previous one, where we actually have a function. f of x is 1 over 1 plus 25x squared. And that's the green curve that we show here on the interval. Notice that the y values are no smaller than 0 no larger than 1, and it just goes from a small number up to 1 and then back down to a number near 0 on the interval. So it looks like a pretty nice function. If we use the 11 points we considered in the previous slides, the equispace Lagrange polynomial points, then we have the red stars. We match those points along the curve, along the green curve, and we fit the 10th degree polynomial through those 11 points, getting us this red dashed curve. And we see that near the middle of the interval, the polynomial interpolation does quite well, whereas near the end of the interval, the errors are really huge. They're bigger than the, func the maximum value of the function on the whole interval. The 
the uh, value of the polynomial goes up close to 2. So the maximum error turns out to be 1.92 for the equispace points. If instead we use the special Chebyshev points that we're going to discuss further in this podcast, that if we use those points, 11 of them for this polynomial interpolation, what we see is this blue curve that has oscillations but always stays relatively close to the green curve. And there, the largest error is about 0.11 using these special Chebyshev root points. So the factor of difference in the error is that the using the equispace points, the error, the maximum error is about 17 times as large as, use, as the maximum error using the Chebyshev root, the roots of the Chebyshev polynomials. So the Chebyshev curve, we notice, distributes the error more evenly. We still have error, oscillating error, as the, through the interpolation. However, the maximum error is way smaller, distributing the error more evenly throughout the interval. So what are these special points that we're using? Well, in order to minimize the maximum value of the numerator, that's the piece that we, can, that we have control over, uh, given that we want to take n points, we will use the following values. These are the values that are the roots of the Chebyshev polynomials. The x values are cosine of 2i minus 1 times pi over 2n, where i is 1, 2, 3, and so forth, up to n. And we notice that the x values will lie on minus 1 to 1. So we notice that the numerator, 2i minus 1, is no bigger than 2n, so you're going up to cosine pi, you're starting with i equal 1, so you're starting with cosine of 1 pi over 2n. So what you have is values that are in the, in the parentheses here that are between 0 and pi, and on that interval that's where cosine goes from 1 down to minus 1. So the x values fall on the interval from minus 1 to 1. These are the roots of what are known as the Chebyshev polynomials. The maximum value of the numerator of the uh, error term for Lagrange polynomial interpolation using these special points for x turns out to be 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. So in the case where we took 11 points, the 10th degree polynomial, that the maximum value of that numerator would be 1 divided by 2 to the 11 minus 1, 1 over 2 to the 10th, or about 1 in 1,000. Let's consider an example. Suppose we wanted to compute the fourth degree polynomial for f of x is e to the x on minus 1 to 1. What values of x should we use if we use those Chebyshev polynomial roots? And so we're going to use five points for a fourth degree polynomial. If we plug in, that means our n is equal to 5, the denominator 2n is 2 times 5, or 10, and we have cosine of pi over 10, cosine of 3 pi over 10, cosine of 5 pi over 10, cosine of 7 pi over 10, and cosine of 9 pi over 10. Notice that if we went further to the next value, would be cosine 11 pi over 10, that just repeats this last value. So that gives us five values on the interval from minus 1 to 1, and if we want to find an upper bound for the error, using the Lagrange polynomial, but through these special points, we see that we take the error formula over here and take the maximum of each piece. We have 1 over 2 to the 5 minus 1 because we've used 5 points, so that's 1 over 16. We have 5 factorial in the denominator. The nth derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so on the interval from minus 1 to 1, the largest value is e to the 1, and we find e over 1920, or about 0 0.0014. So that's a pretty small error where the function goes up to values as high as e to the 1, around 2.7. Let's have a moment of culture. There's a story from the College Math Journal in 1992 that in the days when the trolley cars in Munich were cooled by two small ceiling fans, a student once asked the great physicist Arnold Sommerfeld, why the fans in the trolley car nearly always rotated in opposite directions. Ah, that is very easy to explain, said Sommerfeld, who went on to give an explanation of why the fans should rotate in the same direction. The student then protested, 
But the opposite is true. The fans are rotating in different directions. Ah, replied Sommerfeld. That is even easier to explain. I'm Bruce Bouquet from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Thanks for joining us, and may the power of math be with you.